It's impossible to clean out all bacteria since bacteria are a significant and essential part of our body. There are thousands of billions of microbes inside us that take part in important processes needed for the normal functioning of our organisms. Good bacteria fight bad ones and protect us from many diseases. They improve our immune system, making us stronger and more resistant to the dangers of our world. But one of the most exciting things is that microbes inside our bodies can affect our behavior. These tiny creatures can make you angry, sad, happy, and nervous, or cause hunger and sickness. Microbes live on any tiny area of your skin. They don't just chill and hang out with each other. They're constantly fighting for survival. Big microbes eat smaller ones. Protective bacteria attack harmful ones. They secrete elements that have a direct effect on our bodies. The action never ends. A slight pause occurs when you wash your hands with soap, but after a few minutes, everything starts from the beginning. Our body is home not only to bacteria, but also to fungi and viruses. And most of these creatures live in the dark depths of our bodies, in places where there's practically no oxygen, in our intestines. Suppose you divide the colon of an average person into a million parts. In that case, there will be more bacteria in one such part than people on Earth. It's not just a world, it's a vast universe. And of course, this universe plays a significant role in our lives. Thanks to microbes, many people don't have to suffer from allergies. Someone sneezes because of pollen. Someone has itchy eyes because of flowering plants. Some people's skin gets red because of animal fur. All this happens because their immune system gives false alarms to the body. When some harmless substance or bacteria from dog fur gets on a person's skin or into their respiratory tract, their immune system believes it's something dangerous and begins to react. As a result of this reaction, a person experiences itchiness or begins to sneeze. Also, their immune system can attack good bacteria because it doesn't know how to coexist with them. And this leads to serious health problems. If your body is friends with harmless microbes, then it doesn't react to them and doesn't cause sneezing or rash. For example, microbes that appear early inside your intestines change the behavior of immune cells so that, over time, they stop reacting to many microorganisms. So, if you want to get this result, ensure your body's contact with the environment's biodiversity. The sooner this happens, the better it will be. It's believed that the microbiome inside a person gets formed within the first three years after birth, and then these germs accompany you throughout your life. If you regularly wipe the handles in your house and all the cutlery with antiseptic, don't pick up food from the floor. Try not to leave the house and are afraid of getting dirty, your immunity will most likely be closed inside itself. Any microbe from the outside world will be a serious enemy to it. But at the same time, scientists don't know exactly how the absence of a particular group of microbes can cause health problems. Also, people who grew up in a too clean environment and always tried to fight germs are more likely to have allergies and get sick. Their immunity is weaker than that of people who don't always try to be clean. Running through puddles, swimming in a dirty lake, mud, dust. All this is like a workout for your immune system. But all this doesn't mean that we should not wash. A shower is necessary for hygiene, cleanliness of the skin, and getting rid of the smell of sweat. By the way, this unpleasant smell appears because of bacteria that secrete acids inside your sweat. But don't wash yourself too often, like several times a day. One or two times will be quite enough. And don't use a washcloth too much. You not only wash away harmful bacteria and dirt, but also destroy beneficial microbes and fats necessary for your skin. So you get out of the shower, feeling great, and start to dry yourself off with a towel. And there may be a problem here. When you wipe yourself off, you create microscopic cracks in your skin where bacteria quickly appear. They cling to the towel and multiply quite quickly. The next day, you wipe yourself with the same towel now full of bacteria, and they get into those micro cracks in your skin. Therefore, wash towels more often. Scientists have conducted large-scale studies and found out that the presence or absence of certain types of intestinal bacteria can lead to depression. The microbes living inside us produce substances that affect nerve cells in our brain, and possibly, mood. First, biologists conducted experiments on mice, and saw that some bacteria changed the behavior of these animals. Then, 
the scientists studied the effects of bacteria on 1,054 people. 173 of them were diagnosed with depression or were dissatisfied with their quality of life. Then the scientists compared the microbiomes of both groups and found out that people with depression lack two types of microbes. But this doesn't necessarily mean that a lack of these bacteria causes depression. There's still a lot of research to be done to establish the exact connection between the nervous system and bacteria. Scientists hope that this may lead to new effective treatments for many diseases. The human microbiome also affects the feeling of hunger. Do you think that you want to eat because your stomach is empty and feel sated because it's full? No. This is because the bacteria in your gut give you these sensations. Of course, this also works thanks to special hormones that provide you with the feeling of satiety. Still, they are activated during interactions with the substances secreted by bacteria. Excess weight may also appear because of a special kind of bacteria. As scientists say, if you take intestinal microbes from overweight people and transfer them to mice, animals will also start gaining weight. The same applies to thin people and their bacteria. Just imagine what results diets based on bacterial therapy can have. Currently, such microbial medicine is not developed, but scientists hope it will help effectively treat people with serious health problems. In general, whatever you do, bacteria will always be around you. They are part of your body, literally. Only 43% of the living cells in your body are your live cells. The rest of the cells belong to living microbes. In a sense, a person is a combination of their DNA and the DNA of their microbes. It seems that bacteria control us. Moreover, in a sense, they control the planet. If you add up all the living creatures in the world to find the most common species, then microbes will be first. Their number and weight surpass those of all other creatures on Earth. And if you add up all the bacteria in your body, they will weigh about 3 pounds, which is about the weight of your brain. These creatures multiply endlessly at a tremendous speed, and nothing can stop them. But then, in 1928, Alexander Fleming accidentally discovered penicillin, the world's first antibiotic. It helped save the lives of many people who were sick because of harmful bacteria. However, penicillin destroys not only evil, but also good bacteria. When people began to use it to treat diseases, they faced the problem of allergies and weakened immunity. For example, mice with their natural microbiome can resist about one million harmful salmonella bacteria thanks to their protective microbes. But after one use of antibiotics, mice's bodies can get sick when attacked by only 10 salmonellae. That is, antibiotics helped the mice to destroy all harmful bacteria, but at the same time, they harmed almost all good ones. Therefore, it's very important to keep a balance between antibiotics and your microbiome. Only doctors know how to do it best. You know these before and after makeovers? Well, if you saw a pic of an average human who lived about 1 million years ago, compare it to a pic of an average human who lives today. You'd be astonished. And get this, it's a makeover performed by Mother Nature. Like back in the day, the earliest human species were basically tiny with long arms and short legs. They needed a big digestive tract to handle all those plants they were chowing down on. And their rib cages were super wide to make room for all the organs breaking down their food. Time went by and some of these humans started adapting to hot climates and they all got narrow and leggy to stay cool. They started eating meat and other quick to digest foods which meant they could have smaller digestive tracts and use more energy for their tall bodies and big brains. And when humans spread to colder climates, they evolved short, wide bodies to conserve heat, but they still love their raw meat and cooked food, which could be easily processed in a short digestive tract. Check out this skeleton of an 8-9 to nine year old Homo erectus kid from East Africa. He was already 5 feet 3 inches tall and weighed 106 pounds. If he had grown up, he could have been almost 6 feet tall. His lean body was perfect for hot, dry environments. And then there were the Neanderthals, who were only about 5 foot 4 inches tall on average. They had short, broad bodies that were great for dealing with winter cold and even ice ages.
Junk food is bad for our teeth, but did you know that it can also cause dental crowding? Back in the day, our ancestors had straight teeth with wisdom teeth, but thanks to processed diets and milling technologies, our jaws have shrunk and our teeth are now vying for limited space. So, if you want to avoid a mouthful of crooked teeth, stick to a less processed diet. As humans spread out and adapted to different environments, they changed their body shapes to survive. And as diets changed, so did bodies. But one thing's for sure, early humans were super active, with thicker and stronger bones than we have today. Nowadays, we're evolving sleeker and weaker bones thanks to our less physically demanding lifestyles. Yeah, it's cool to see how much we changed over time. Humans were cool back in the day, but they're probably even cooler now. You may not know it, but your bones are like supermodels. They're designed to be used all the time, and they look pretty good too. But guess what's even stronger? Your teeth! When you bite down, your teeth can exert a whopping 5,600 pounds of pressure per square inch. That's some serious chomping power! Speaking of bones, did you know that they're made up of water? Yep, about 25% of your bone mass is actually H2O. And here's another fun fact. Your eyes are like car engines. They need fluids to function properly, just like an engine needs gasoline. So when you blink up to 20,000 times a day, you're basically giving your eyes a windshield wash. Have you ever blushed and felt your cheeks turn red? Well, did you know that your stomach lining can blush too? When you blush, there's an increased blood flow in your body, and that includes your stomach lining. It turns red because it has plenty of blood vessels, and when there's more blood than usual, it shows. Now, we all know that plastic is bad for the environment, but did you know that we can actually digest it in tiny quantities? However, our digestive system can't handle grass. Grazing animals have special teeth and several stomachs to process raw leaves and grass, while we're stuck with just one stomach. We all have two super-fast muscles that control our eyelids closing. They're actually the fastest muscles in our body, and they shut our eyes within a mere 0.1 second when triggered. And while we still don't know why we blink, we do know that women blink more often than men and that we tend to blink in unison when watching a movie with friends. Maybe it's just a weird human thing. You flex that strong handshake and think it's all because of your gym grind? Ha! Turns out your pinky finger is the real MVP. No joke! Believe it or not, that little finger packs a punch and is responsible for 50% of your hand strength. Who knew the underdog could be such a powerhouse? Your toes are like two little homies that carry almost half of your body weight and don't even listen to people who say you don't need them. Your toes are the most important guys when it comes to walking and pushing you forward. Our hair color is easily explained by genes. There are not more than 2% of people with natural red hair. They're followed by blondes, about 3%, and by all the varieties of brown shades, only about 11%. The vast majority goes to black hair, including very dark brown. Who knew that nails had a secret talent besides helping us pick up tiny objects and peel off stickers? They also give us a structure to press against so we know how firmly to hold anything. Talk about multi-talented! Move over, Rapunzel! It's not just our hair and nails that can grow. Our liver can regenerate itself from just 51% of its original size back to full size. But don't go damaging it too much or you'll end up with scars. Did you know that the skin is the largest organ in our body? It makes up a whopping 15% of our total body weight. And if you shed more than your fluffy cat snowball, don't worry, it's normal. We lose up to 9 pounds of skin cells every year. Gross, but fascinating. Who would have thought that tomatoes have more genes than humans? But don't worry, it's not the number of genes that matters. It's how they all work together. So go ahead and enjoy that tomato sauce on your pizza. Hold your nose the next time you eat and see how much your taste buds fade. 
It turns out that the nose is actually responsible for 75 to 95 percent of our taste perception. So don't underestimate the power of those sniffers. Keep your mouth hydrated or your taste buds won't work properly. Saliva triggers chemical reactions with enzymes that break down the food as soon as it enters your mouth. So drink up and savor those flavors. Forget about distinguishing between 10,000 smells. Recent research shows that we can actually differentiate between over a trillion smells. And not only that, but smells can evoke some distant memories too. So next time you catch a whiff of something familiar, take a moment to reminisce. When you're snoozing away, your sense of smell goes on vacation too. So even if your room smells like a dumpster fire, you won't even notice it. Sweet dreams, right? And speaking of dreams, did you ever wonder why some of them are in black and white, while others are like a rainbow explosion? Well, apparently it all depends on the TV you watched as a kid. So I guess your grandparents had some pretty boring dreams, huh? Now let's talk about listening to your heart. Not only is it a great metaphor for following your dreams, but it can also give you away if you're lying. Yeah, your heart rate starts racing like Usain Bolt when you're fibbing. Okay, brace yourself for this one. Even if you brush your teeth like a champ and use mouthwash like it's going out of style, your mouth is still a germ hotspot. Gross, right? But don't worry, most of those bacteria are actually good for us and keep the bad stuff away. But wait, there's more. The belly button is actually the second dirtiest place on our bodies. Yeah, I know, who knew? Since we don't really use it after we're born, it becomes a breeding ground for all kinds of icky stuff. It's got over 2,300 bacterial species living in there. So maybe it's time to give our belly button some extra TLC. Can you tell me what you and this cute koala have in common? You both like to chillax and constantly snack on something. And you also have similar fingerprints. Okay, it's no surprise that monkeys have those because we are related, but koalas? Turns out, although they were developing somewhere on the other side of evolution from humans, they did get similar traits to us. We even kind of use fingerprints for the same purposes. We need those to grasp, hold, and manipulate things and get a finer perception of the textures and shapes around us. So yes, to grab an Xbox gamepad and win that game. For koalas, who are super picky eaters, the gamepad is replaced with eucalyptus leaves they run through to find the finest of them. You got your fingertips when you were still growing in the womb. They're made up of ridges. Each ridge has pores that are connected to sweat glands under your skin. That's why you leave your fingerprints when you touch glasses, tables, and all other kinds of surfaces. It's all about the sweat. All the ridges form patterns that look like spirals, arches, and loops. Those patterns are even more unique than your DNA. There's a 1 in 64 billion chance that your fingerprint will be exactly like someone else's. Even identical twins don't have the same pattern. So, no long-lost fingerprint twin for you, sorry. That unique pattern stays with you for your entire life. If you happen to damage your fingerprints somehow, or develop some skin condition that can change them, they will still grow back within a month. As you grow older, the skin on your fingertips loses some of its elasticity, and the ridges get thicker. The fingerprints don't change even then, but it becomes harder to scan them or take prints from them. Doing certain jobs can affect the pattern of your fingerprints. If you're a construction worker, especially a bricklayer, or have to wash dishes by hand, you might lose some details in your beautiful natural pattern. Folks who work with certain chemicals also face the same risk. But no worries, once you stop doing those activities, you'll get your fingertips back. So they're unique and never change. Sounds like they were made to prove your identity, right? It looks like the ancient Babylonians were the first ones to appreciate those properties of fingerprints. They pressed them into clay to record business transactions. Starting from the 19th century, fingerprints have been used to identify criminals. In 1902, fingerprints were used as evidence at the court in England for the first time. A year later, the idea moved on to New York. Now, different types of fingerprint scanners come with many gadgets to make sure they're dealing with the right person. You can unlock your phone, tablet, laptop, USB drive, smart lock, and whatnot with just one touch. 
This tech itself is extremely accurate, but it depends on many factors. If the scanning goes wrong because the fingers are wet, greasy, too dry or injured, you can't expect to get the correct result. The quality of the scanner also plays its role. It's like with a camera on your phone. You need to have a really good sensor and hardware to get high quality shots. At the user level, it seems like fingerprint ID tech is impeccable. If you save one finger in your phone system, you won't be able to unlock it with another. At a more professional level, errors do happen. Sometimes the system can't identify a registered finger or identifies a finger that's not in the records by mistake. It's rather tricky to fool one of those smart scanners and feed it a fake fingerprint, but it's doable. Shortly after iPhone Touch ID was released, researchers took photos of fingerprints on a glass surface and made molds to fool the scanner. It worked back then, but the progress doesn't stand still. Smartphones now have ultrasound fingerprint scanners, and those are more secure. So in theory, if you decided to recreate your fingerprints for some reason, one possible way would be to make a mold. You can use modeling clay or the same gelatin that gummy bears are made of. It has similar conductivity as your finger. Another simple solution is to put your fingertip on a piece of sticky tape and use the image you get to deceive a scanner. That, or take a photo of a fingerprint on a glass surface, then take it to a 3D printer, calibrate it, and print it. There is also a more elaborate method the bad guys could theoretically use to steal someone's identity or unlock a gadget. If you ever left your fingerprints somewhere, you can't be 100% sure they're safe in a database. You can even find some scanned fingerprints available online. The next step would be to turn the image into a 3D model and print it on a 3D printer. Researchers tried doing it, but the polymer those printers used was too hard, so scanners didn't recognize it as a human finger. They found another solution and printed a cast to make a prosthetic finger from the right material. I guess we can all be happy it sounds like a lot of work. So not so many bad guys would go that far. Sometimes even a photo is enough to recreate someone's fingerprint pattern. Japan's National Institute of Informatics ran a test and found that flashing a peace sign in photos can lead to your personal data leakage. If your fingerprints are in focus and the lighting is good, the pattern can be read and copied, even if the photographer is nine feet away from you. So if someone does get access to your fingerprints, how could they use them against you? Well, the problem here is that you can change a password or even buy a new gadget, but a fingerprint is something that stays with you forever and can't be changed. So the bad guys get permanent access to your identity this way. They could use it to unlock your gadgets to do online banking and get access to your digital wallet, email, medical identity, and other sensitive data. They could shop online on your behalf or access the building where you work. The good news is that it's really tricky to put that mean puzzle together. Criminals would most likely need more than just a photo or a mold of your fingerprints to use it against you. If you still think your fingerprint is worth showing to everyone, you can order custom-made jewelry with it. Those designs are becoming more and more popular. Makes sense. You can be sure your pendant will be one of a kind, or at least one in 64 billion. In case you're having doubts about the safety of fingerprint ID, you might like an alternative to it, the microbiome. It's the genetic material of all the bacteria and other microorganisms living inside you. It looks like the microbiome stays the same for a long period of time, and you can identify people by it among populations of hundreds. Well, stealing that ID would sure not be easy. Your tongue also has its unique pattern of tiny bumps and ridges. That pattern hardly changes over time because the tongue sits safely inside your mouth. Your lips, too, have a unique print of elevations and depressions. It would be really romantic to unlock a phone with a kiss, right? Or identify criminals this way. The only problem is that they rarely smooch the crime scenes. Then, there are also your toe prints. Those also form their unique pattern when you're still in the fetus position. There was even one case when a burglar got identified by a mark he left on the floor. He broke into a bakery in Scotland, so the flour was all over the place. The jury convicted the suspect within a short 15 minutes. You probably never thought it was that special, but your ear could also compete in the race for the most unique body part. Do you feel all those curves and the ridges at the rim of your ear? No one else in the world has an exactly identical set. Unlocking your phone with an ear scan seems logical. Let's see if it happens.